Well, good morning, everyone. We thank you for joining us on this September 11th morning, a morning of memorial and the first session of this school year's Distinguished Speaker Series. And we are certainly greatly honored to have such uh, an impressive and accomplished individual here with us this morning, Congressman Jim Banks, who I'll introduce in just a few minutes. But good morning, Congressman Banks, and it's an honor to have you with us. I know that for each of us sitting here, and in fact for all Americans, September 11th, 2001, forever changed our world, forever changed our lives. Many of you students who are here today were young children at the time that might not remember that particular day, or that you've heard from your parents or professors about that day and the events that took place that indelibly shaped our great nation, defined a generation, and a way of life for us that we now live today. On that fateful day, thousands of unsuspecting innocent men, women, and children were attacked along with their way of life, one of freedom and democracy. Even today, 17 years after that event, it's hard to make sense out of this senseless tragedy. And so it's fitting that we join together this morning to honor the memory of more than 3,000 people who died that day along with their families, their friends, and a nation that still grieves their loss. At this time, I ask that all of you stand as the Trine University Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps present the colors followed by the singing of the national anthem by the Trine University Choir, immediately followed by a moment of silence to honor and remember the victims of the September 11th, 2001, the civilians killed in the attacks, those who gave their lives saving others, survivors, first responders, and the members of the armed forces who have died and those who continue to wage the war on terrorism.
Thank you. You may be seated. This morning, I have the honor and privilege to introduce and welcome United States Congressman Jim Banks. Congressman Banks is a native Hoosier who served his state and country in a variety of roles throughout his career. The Congressman was born and raised in Columbia City, where he and his family still reside today. He earned an undergraduate degree from Indiana University and a Master of Business Administration from Grace College. Congressman Banks worked in both the commercial construction and real estate industry in Fort Wayne over the past decade and served in the Indiana State Senate from 2010 to 2016. In the State Senate, he chaired the Senate Veteran Affairs and the Military Committee and led the charge on significant pro-growth, pro-family, and pro-veteran reforms. Congressman Banks served in the U.S. Navy Reserve as a Supply Corps officer and took a leave of absence from the Indiana State Senate in 2014 and 2015 to deploy to Afghanistan during Operations Enduring Freedom and Freedom Sentinel. He received the Defense Meritorious Service Medal for his leadership, his military leadership in Afghanistan. In 2008, he was named to Northeast Indiana's future 40 leaders under 40, and in 2011, was recognized as the top rising Republican legislator by Governing Magazine. Ivy Tech Community College awarded Congressman Banks the Distinguished Public Official Award in 2013, and he received the American Legion's Distinguished Public Service Award in 2013, 2014, and 2016 for his work on behalf of Hoosier veterans. On January 3, 2017, he became Indiana's third congressional district in the U.S. House of Representatives representing our district. He currently serves on the House Armed Services, Veteran Affairs, and Education and Workforce Committees. Commerce and Bank lives in Columbia City with his wife, Amanda, and their three daughters, Lillian, Elizabeth, and Joanne. Congressman Banks, we're honored and pleased to have you with us today. At this time, would you please join me in welcoming United States Congressman Jim Banks to Trine University. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning to each and every one of you. To President Brooks, the Board of Trustees, students, faculty, Ralph and Sherry Trine, and so many other fellow citizens and friends from the Angola area, thank you very much for having me here today. On this solemn day of remembrance, I am thankful and humbled to be here on this campus at Trine University to begin this year's Distinguished Speaker Series. But first, let me pay tribute to some of my heroes, the men and women who motivate my service above all else in the United States Congress. If you have served this country in uniform, will you please stand today so we can thank you for your service. Please, please stand so uh, we know who you are. Th thank you to each and every one of you for what you have done uh, to serve and protect this country, the greatest country in the world. We are here today to remember another day in American history that will live in infamy. The horrific activities that happened on this day, September 11th, on 2001. The events in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania on that day alone led to nearly 3,000 deaths and has dramatically shaped the, the very fabric of our country every single day since. To date myself, 17 years ago, I was where many of you are in life today. As a college student, uh, starting my day at Indiana University in Bloomington, rising a little bit early, comparatively speaking, um, I recall a fellow member of my college fraternity from across the hall reacting and calling me into his room in the aftermath of the first plane, American Airlines Flight 11, crashing into the north side 
of the North Tower of the World Trade Center at 8.46 a.m., crashing between the 93rd and the 99th floor um, of that building. In that moment, all of us watching had little comprehension of how our lives would change and what would unfold next. I settled into my room at the Delta Chi fraternity, I see a t-shirt in the front row, and I turned on uh, the TV in my room just in time to see the United Airlines Flight 175 crash into the south side of the South Tower of the World Trade Center at 9.03 a.m. Another plane, American Airlines Flight 77, would crash into the Pentagon at 9.37 a.m. And heroes on flight, on United Airlines Flight 93 would take matters into their own hands, as all of you know, and fight against the terrorist to tragically crash into a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania at 10.03 a.m. In doing so, these brave heroes on flight on United Airlines Flight 93 thwarted the terrorist intentions of crashing into the White House while knowingly sacrificing their own lives. I will never forget the activities of that day. I'll never forget where I was in my, in my fraternity room with, with who, who I was with on that morning. I'll never forget what I saw, and I'm certainly never going to forget how I felt in that moment. But many of you are from a, a different generation, the first generation um, in our country that will not have direct memories of those tragic events, that gut-wrenching reaction to a life-changing moment that shapes you in ways that you sometimes cannot explain. Every generation you see has a, uh, in American history has at least one of those moments. For my parents, generation, it was recalling where and, and when, uh, where and what they were doing uh, when they heard of the news of President John F. Kennedy's assassination. For my grandparents, it was the day, that, that day that will live in infamy, uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Wars, assassinations, and other events may have shaken us at our very core, but those same moments have shaped our resilient American spirit, permanently embedding events in the story of who we are as a nation. As your congressman, my role is to strengthen our resilience every day in preparation for a future that none of us can predict. September 11th of 2001 and other past tragic events remind us in our country of our vulnerabilities. They remind us, most importantly, that our freedom isn't free. They remind us that our nation is blessed, but that there are evil forces in this world who seek to eliminate our American principles of self-government and liberty from the very face of this earth to advance their wicked ideologies. Those moments shape who we are as Americans. And for me, public service uh, is uniquely formed by the morning of those activities 17 years ago from today on the morning of September 11th of 2001. From performing the duties that I performed as a Navy officer in Afghanistan to service in the halls of Congress, my calling to public service over the years was deeply influenced by the activities that occurred on September 11th, 17 years ago from this morning. But four years ago from today, I recall another 9-11 anniversary that remains with me to this day as well. On, on that day, I had recently left my wife and three daughters, who were age five, three, and one at the time, and was training at Fort Jackson in, in South Carolina. This was the beginning of, a, for me, a nine-month journey of service that included a stint uh, in Afghanistan, where I would see first hand the impact of what began in the aftermath of September 11th of 2001 on that devastating day. You see President George W. Bush on the heels of 9-11 said, quote, the action we take and the decisions we make in this decade will have consequences far into this century. If America shows weakness and uncertainty, the world will drift toward tragedy. And that will not happen on my watch, end quote. The consequences of 9-11 
have, for our country have been sobering. And here are just a few examples of what I mean by that. 6,951 service members have died in Iraq or Afghanistan. As an example, just last week on September 3rd, U.S. Army Command Sergeant Major Timothy Bulliard was on his 13th deployment when he was killed during an apparent insider attack in Afghanistan. He had already been decorated with six bronze stars, two with valor devices earned on six different occasions during his eight combat deployments. 52,739 service members have been wounded in either Iraq or Afghanistan since, two, since September 11th of 2001. And we have spent as a nation $1.5 trillion on military operations in those two countries. But I want you to think about something else for a moment. Think, think about this long and hard today as you leave um, this Remembrance event. Very soon, we project sometime in the next, maybe, maybe within the next year, we will be sending service members to Afghanistan who were not even born on 9-11 of 2001. We are expanding, we are continuing to expand operations in Iraq, committed to training, advising, and assisting the Iraqi security forces so that they will be able to keep their nation safe from terrorism and maintain sovereignty over a nation that also desires to be free just like our own. As a member of Congress, I seek to do whatever I can to focus on these policies that are most important. A ready military, care for our veterans, and growing opportunities for the next generation. As a nation, we must be willing to support our military with the resources necessary to be ready for today's challenges and tomorrow's uncertainties. That's why I've dedicated so much of my time in Congress in my freshman term to my work on the House Armed Services Committee, where we are rebuilding our military and reversing readiness shortfalls that have come from a nation fighting terrorists at an extraordinarily high operation tempo for 17 years. My fellow veterans here know firsthand that shortchanging readiness on the front end will have long-term implications in the years that follow. Caring for our veterans must be of an equally high important to us as a nation. We owe our very tangible debt of gratitude to those who have served our nation, and I've dedicated myself to them through my work on the House Veterans Affairs Committee. Just as we would not send them into harm's way without the training they need, we have an obligation to care for the injuries they sustained uh, when they return home. Our veterans deserve and have earned the highest quality of care provided in a timely and efficient manner. And I am honored uh, to recently have been named chairman of the newest subcommittee on technology modernization where we are overseeing the Department of Veteran Affairs modernization of electronic health records, as an example. As we look into the future, I hope to contribute to the next generation's ability to grow, learn, and preserve the freedoms we have been blessed to have in our nation for over 240 years. And that's why my work on the education and workforce committee is dedicated to ensuring those freedoms are granted to parents and children of this and future generations as they prepare for a life in an increasingly complex world. So in closing, I would like to share with you some sage words from my favorite modern president who saw our nation persevere through difficult times. President Ronald Reagan once said, quote, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them to do the same, end quote. I encourage each of you to take this advice as you prepare for the future. And as we remember what happened on this day and this moment 17 years ago from today, on September 11th of 2001, I hope that like me, many of you will be inspired to public service, whether you serve in uniform or whether you serve in politics or find a, another way to serve this, this great country, we all must step up and do our part. So we must never forget the sacrifices of our fellow Americans that resulted from the tragic events of September 11th on 2001. Thank you again for this opportunity to address you today. May God bless America, the armed services, our state and its people. Thank you for having me.
Congressman Banks, thank you so much for being here with us this morning on this special occasion. Thank you for your military service. Thank you for your representation of our district in Washington, D.C. We cannot, we cannot thank you enough. And as a result, we have a small token of our appreciation this morning to carry with you of this moment here at Tryon University. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all again so much for being here with us on this special morning. We're now going to uh, conclude this morning's ceremony. If you all would please rise uh, as the Trine University Choir concludes this morning events with the singing of God Bless America. Thank you all again so much and God bless.